Hey, and welcome to Friends and Neighbors. This is an incredible place to be today. We have David L. Cook. Yes. He is a gospel recording artist. He's a comedian. He is incredible, and we are so blessed to have him. Yes, we well, we got are. you too. Yes, we. Do. We got Donna well, here yeah. too, and yes. we got Sherry. Yes, we do. Yes. Sherry's here today. Hi. But you guys, we're gonna just sit back and for the next few minutes just hear about this man's incredible life. I love when God said, mm. "Where much is given, much is required," and that is truly your life, David L. Cook. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm proclimping right here. <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to hear about you and your life and what you've done, where you've come from, where you are now. But I want to start at the beginning and I want to talk about when you were coming up as a child. You were a famous child before you even knew what fame was. You already were. And my probation officer still <laughs> tells me I'm famous every day. And every you talk to him daily. Every day. Well, every day, check in. I peed on him last week. <laughs> React. Yeah. <laughs> what was the reaction? He said, "Ooh." <laughs> it was, well, you obviously had to be there. you were clean because you're here. I was. Yes. Good yeah. deal. So tell me about your life. I mean, you are a famous recording artist, mm -hmm. and it's so cool. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> oh my god! Well, that's a big deal to me. That's okay. a big deal. I okay. mean, your what life is just incredible. It is a great. Well, they told me that I was coming on a show that was like The View, and now I'm. This You're is, wandering. This it's is, the view all about you. This is the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Got the well, view well, of the hood. Well, tell me a little about your childhood. I'd like to hear that. Well, um, a, a, a lot of people know that my family were the Cook family singers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we appeared on the Grand Ole Opry with the, with the Carters. We toured with Mama Maybell Carter and all the Carter family. Um, and I, I, the the story that I've always been told, because I wasn't there, um, was that you know the the Carters and the Cooks got together at the World's Fair in sh the Chicago mm. World's Fair, and she, M Mother Maybell Carter, enjoyed the harmony that my family had, mm. and that's one that's one that's one of the proudest things about um, my family legacy is that you know you have a whole lot of gospel groups that when they start they start off as a family but then they start incorporating other people into the group and then sooner or later you know you find out <laughs> they've been <laughs> impregnated with all kinds of people and the the original bloodline is gone you know um, but the Cook family always maintained you know mm -hmm. cooks in their group okay they bred them to sing. <laughs> they bred them. Well, did you have a, what they say, a normal childhood being brought up? And that because you also said that Johnny Mercer was your, your great uncle. My great uncle. So you had it on mm -hmm. both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. But here you are a child in all of this, and you are subjected to a lot of things, I'm sure, not maybe as normal as we think normal is. So is that true? Well, I mean... When you're five years old and you're put in front of thousands of people, mm. you know, that, um, it, I think that that does a lot to a five-year-old psyche, number one, mm -hmm. because that becomes a norm, you know, that, beca that becomes a norm to that child. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kind of became a norm to me. Mm -hmm. it, it was, I, I knew that I, I was meant to get up there and sing. Did, so, th did they make you learn to sing? Were you made to do that, or did you have an option? No, I really wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, my mother said that when she was breastfeeding, I, you know, <laughs> you I would hum. Me. And so, it's <laughs> <laughs> a little information you may not know. Um, anyway, uh, I'm sorry, Mom. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's it's... It was one of those things that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. However, it got to the point because my father, uh, I did not have a close relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. uh, none of his kids had a close relationship with him. He was, he was not the kind of man that you could be close to. Was he mm -hmm. one way in public and another oh, way in private? Most certainly, yes. Yes, he was. And that... To me, that's what really started to play with my mm. head was 
I would see him go out on stage and he would be one way. And then when he got on the bus or we got home, he was totally different mm. and, you know, very violent and, and things of that nature. And, you know, alcohol can do unsurmountable things to a person. Mm -hmm. Basically a child. Right. You know, and, but I wasn't the only victim there. He was a victim right. too, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, it took me a long time and a lot of therapy to understand that I was not the real victim in the situation. Mm -hmm. I was just the aftermath, you know, I was just the aftermath. He was the victim mm -hmm. of the whole thing. But as a child, you didn't see it that way. I didn't see it that way. Because not only were you affected, you saw where your mom was affected as well. Well, my mother, now my mother was a professional model. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I was the kid who was always, ah, that's my mom, you know. Um, but then I also saw times where she had to go and put on very heavy makeup and everything where he had, you know, mm -hmm. really done some damage to her. Uh, and those things are imprinted into your memory and you just can't ever let that go. But how as a child do you, do you analyze that in your mind? I mean, what you was, make it what went You don't, you don't. And that's, that's how I ended up having the problems that I had. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's all God's glory mm -hmm. and victory, you know, um, I, I wrote a song called "Why Can't I Go Back," and um, and it's 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 off of my new album um, right oh, there. Oh, right so, here. So, um, but anyway, okay. um, but it, the song talks about all of the things that you go through in life. You know, you hear people say, "I wish that I could go back and change that," or "I wish that I could do that different." Not me. You know, mm -hmm. even the abuse that I went through, mm -hmm. I don't ever want to go back and change it. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't ask that anybody else have to go through it, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't change it because it helped me to be who I am today, mm -hmm. you know, right. and the person I am today is a pretty good person and I'm proud of the person I am today. I'm, and I'm very thankful for everything that God has given me and he's given me one of the things that I, I treasure every day and I thank him for is the ability to have compassion. Mm. Amen. You know, because there's a lot of people out there, and you know who you are. Mm -hmm. You have not shown me compassion, okay? You've talked about me. You've lied about me. You've said things that weren't, you know, true. That's, you're the victim, mm -hmm. not me. But how do you, know? you, David, how, do you agree. how do you get through that without be, being bitter? Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. mm -hmm. Medication. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not the blue pill. Not the blue. Um, but uh, this is this is a family show. No. Um, it's okay to be bitter, as long as you know where to lay the bitterness, which is at the foot of the cross. Amen. Okay. okay. Amen, David. And you have to learn how to lay it down, and you have to learn how to keep it down. Mm -hmm. And when I started going through all the problems, when I was being beaten by my father and stuff like that, I would have these periods of blackouts. You know, and we just thought, you know, it, I would wake up and I would be hurting, but I wouldn't remember mm. being hit. I wouldn't remember being abused. And it, but it got progressively worse as I got older because every time I got into a stressful situation, I then learned how to evidently disassociate myself so that I was there physically, but I was not there mentally. Is that a form of amnesia? It is. It is. It, it, it's a form a... of disassociating from your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you find, too, David, the older you get, the more you find how many people were abused as children and that you can have more compassion on them because you've lived it? also yourself because you were saying you have that compassion do you I don't I've never met anyone that has the amnesia like you mm. had but I know it's very prevalent in today's society I think that now when we're talking amnesia okay we're not talking you know we're talking real amnesia we're talking about somebody who 
can dislodge themselves from a familiar surrounding, okay, and put themselves into another surrounding and not even know that they've done it. Mm. And nobody knows that they've done it because they don't see that person acting any different. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's part, that's, uh, that's part of, you know, psychogenic amnesia, you know, and, and dissociation. Um, but mine was a whole lot worse because I had what they called a conversion reaction, which was the manifestation of physical symptoms. My whole left side had went completely out. They thought that I had had a stroke. Wow. And I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk. The, the pupil of my eye had dilated to the size of the iris. Um, so this know. wasn't a physical injury, this was a This was psychological? a psychological injury mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's, called, um, it's called a conversion uh, reaction and it's the manifestations of physical symptoms. It's your body's way of saying, mm -hmm. I can't take no more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a problem so that you will have to stop. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what happened to me. So were you having to perform while all this was going on as well? Would yeah. you have to do exactly what your dad did and get up there and put on a different face when he would How long be in public eye? with your dad to see you? Well, I, I stayed with my family until I was 15. And then they retired because my mom and my father divorced. And, um, you know, at that point, I went on to a solo career. And I, I started doing, you know, television work. And um, I had a very lucrative career in dance music. You know, I, I did a lot of dance music, you know, for the 80s and things like that. And, you know, I was like, I was out shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting down. I was shaking it. <laughs> So were your parents supportive of you doing dance music? Um, they never knew. <laughs> oh yeah, they know now. <laughs> well, they're in heaven now, but yeah, they, they, they no, they knew. And um, you know, my mother would just sit me down. And she'd say, "Honey, <laughs> don't, don't, don't make me turn red." Yeah. Okay, and so I knew what that meant. She said, "Because I want to be able to still wear pearls." <laughs> so you were, were you singing or were you DJing or writing? What no, were I was you doing? singing. I was singing. I was singing. You were singing yeah, dance I was singing. That's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. And uh, going into clubs and everything and, you know, still being underage. So I was the oh. original Justin Bieber. Or in that, <laughs> I, was a, I, was a, I was a Bieber. Beaver, beaver, yeah. Oh, my well, we're going to have to get a break real okay. quick. Okay. But we're going to come right back with more of you. I can't wait to get to part two. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with more David L. Cook she's, on Friends and Neighbors. touching me. <laughs> I can't help it.